In this video, I'm going to explain why Dr. Mike Isratel's statements about the genetics of natural influencers are a violation of basic scientific principles. I'm going to explain why the way Dr. Mike talks about genetics is unscientific and arguably non-falsifiable and why it matters. In short, he's blackpilling Addies for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Now, this is not a personal attack on Dr. Mike. It's not personal because he's not the only one doing this. In fact, a lot of the fitness industry talks about genetics in exactly this way, so this is a broader conversation we need to have, and this is just a useful example. So before I put up the clip I'm going to respond to, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, doing the bell thing, all the YouTube algorithm stuff, would be greatly appreciated. Now, before I put the clip up, I'm going to give you the context that he's saying this in. Basically, he's arguing against the idea that natties shouldn't look up to enhanced lifters for inspiration because they'll never achieve a result, so they should be looking up to natural influencers to get inspiration. And this is what he's making the case against. Okay, so I'll give you the clip. A lot of times people will take this little off ramp, I think to nowhere, and I'm gonna give it what I think is a good argument that it's to nowhere, and where the real freeway heads in to a really awesome place by which you can motivate yourself. And that off ramp is people saying, well, hold on a sec, hold on, okay, why don't we just follow only natural people, if we're natties, and just use them to motivate us, then it's problem solved. But that actually isn't getting to the real core of the problem, and here's the thing. Natural influencers almost always have phenomenal genetics. And if you think about it, the way drugs work on your body is they just make some genes work faster and some genes work slower, the genes that add, mus add muscle work faster, the genes are, are more of the protein is transcribed off of them, and uh, there's, you know, the fat gains, the genes, various genes associated with gaining fat are turned down. And that's largely, or at least one of the main ways in which a lot of drugs actually work is modifying how your genes are expressed. And so in essence, drugs make it seem kind of that the phenotype, what you present as, has a better genotype behind it. It's like the illusion of really good genetics. That's why when you have to see, when you see a jacked guy or jack girl in any gym, uh, a thought that may go through your head is like, does that guy like on drugs or, or what? Or do they just have amazing genetics? So in a sense, having amazing genetics is much like having, you know, somebody be on drugs and the operative situation here is that if you have average genetics and you look to someone who is on drugs, the retort there is, well, don't look to them. You'll never look like that. You're not on drugs. You're never going to relate. Agreed. But if you have average genetics, and most of us do by literal definition, and you look to someone who is elite, genetically gifted, drug-free fitness figure, bodybuilder, whatever kind of person that we look up to, the same retort applies. Actually, you know you can't relate to that person because they have such good genetics, they're as far away from you as the drug person in many cases. So a lot of you might have watched that and not immediately seen anything wrong with it, and that's completely understandable because we see similar statements about genetics all the time in today's fitness industry, and I think the fault for that lies in a large part with science-based influencers who are arguably failing in their responsibility to educate about the basic principles of science instead of just getting straight to the EEG studies and the implications of this or that study on this or that exercise modality. But to put it in, in plain English, I'll get into more advanced scientific stuff later, but in plain English, Dr. Mike is just making that up. He's just guessing, and it's not a particularly educated guess. He's making guesses about genetics that he's not testing in any way. Okay, Dr. Mike has not gone out and gotten DNA samples from any natural fitness influencers because that's what we're talking about. We throw around the word genetics all the time, but it's not just a magic word that you can apply willy-nilly. It's talking about a real thing that's your DNA that's you know in all your cells telling your body pretty much everything to do, right? Uh, so if we're talking about genetics, you would think that we would have some reference in there to DNA if we're... You know, on a science-based channel, speaking scientifically, you're talking about a thing, you might want to be in some way like empirically observing that thing, right? DNA is a thing. If we're talking about it, there should probably 
be some way to actually assess it. But we're not doing that. No one's getting DNA tests. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Mike, if you actually have um, <laughs> gotten DNA tests from any influencers. Uh, hey, I'll take this back. I don't think it's the case because we, it's not common practice in the industry. People just feel fully confident saying whatever they want about somebody else's genetics, their genetics. I have bad genetics. That guy has great genetics. That guy has bad genetics. I have great genetics. Just whatever story they want to make up. Right. And no one's, no one's out there saying, yeah, man, I, I, uh, here's the results of my DNA test. I went over it with my geneticist. Um, turns out I have fantastic genetics or what, I don't think you can even do that. I, I think you can probably, my understanding is the, the state of the, of the, um, of the industry is you, you could probably get some hints. There's probably some, like, you know, some big markers that you could see, but you're not going to get the full picture of, okay, I have terrible genetics, mediocre genetics, kind of good genetics great genetics, amazing genetics, like Greg said. Like, it, I don't think we have the technology quite to that level yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I'm not saying that genetics aren't important. Like, in actual reality, genetics are hugely important to everything we do. I'm talking about, number one, our actual ability to assess it, and I don't think even the technology is quite to the level of backing up the claims that people are making. But even if it were, we aren't doing the testing whatsoever. Like no one is submitting, you know, blood samples or spit swabs or whatever the case may be to DNA labs, going over it with a geneticist and coming back and saying, okay, yeah, the, this is everyone's genes, right? I, at least when we deal with, um, with steroid accusations, some people say, hey, I'll take a drug test. I mean, at least they're showing that they're, you know, that they're willing to try to test this stuff. When we talk about genetics, it's just, we just make stuff up, you know? Um, and you might come back and say, oh, well, you can kind of look at someone and know, you know, how good their genetics are. Dr. Mike is an expert. He's been doing this a long time. So he, uh, he's looked at a lot of people. Maybe he can just look at people and tell how their genetics are. I would be willing to give that the benefit of the doubt if we were actually doing something to make that the case. Like, let, let me, let me explain what, what he would need to be doing for me to believe that. If, if he wanted to just you know, eyeball people and tell me what their genetics were, like here, this, this would be the scientific process. Well, not scientific. Well, the, you know what? I mean? This would be the evidence-based process. We would just take a group of guys, pick out which ones we think have good genetics, which ones have bad genetics. Then we would get all of them DNA tested and to the best of our ability, which I don't think is that great yet, but to the best of our ability, we try to confirm those. So, you know, okay, I said this guy had great genetics. He actually had mediocre genetics, but this guy, I was spot on. I said he had great genetics. He did. This guy, I said he had bad genetics. He did. So I was good on these guys. I screwed up on these on these guys. Okay, let's let's learn from that and you know keep practicing. And I think over time, if you did enough of that, you'd probably be able to you know make fairly good educated guesses, uh, Doctor Mike. If you've done that, then I'll take your claims with a lot more you know, weight, right? I don't think he's done that. Hey, I'm open, I'm open to being proven wrong. This is a statement I'm making. It's falsifiable, right? You can, if I'm wrong, I, I can be proved wrong, right? Send me the receipts, you know? Um, so that, that would, that would, I think, allow someone to eyeball it a little bit better. I don't think that's being done. And now there are some things that you can, there's going to be kind of a uh, Moden Bailey argument here where they're going to say, oh, well, you can just look at, at someone and see their limb lengths, their their muscle belly shape, stuff like that. And that's largely genetic. Okay. Yeah. So that you're right. You know, if somebody has extremely long arms and you know, they have a, an amazing deadlift, okay. They probably have good genetics for deadlifting, right? That's, that's fair, but that's not what we're talking about in most cases. That's in most cases, we're talking about muscle building, right? Like the ability to build muscular size. And that is not as easily observed, you know, yeah, if, if someone if someone gets incredibly jacked, just huge, you know, 250 ripped, and they look terrible, even though they're 250 ripped, okay, you know, okay, you, you can say the guy has bad genetics, but that's not usually what we're talking about. We're talking about the guy who is 150 pounds saying he can't get any bigger, you know, or in some cases, the guy who is 250 pounds ripped and saying he got that way drug free just because his genetics are that good, right? And as far as like actual putting on muscular size, I do not believe that anyone has the capability to just look at someone and tell, oh yeah, that guy's got the genetics to put on a lot of muscular size. You know, I mean, you can look at their, you can obviously look at their wrists and stuff. I, I mean, if you see a really big frame dude, then obviously he's going to be big. 
all around, but that I think that's not necessarily exactly what we're talking about either. So we're just kind of making stuff up. And I mean, it just, it seems like, you know, it just kind of seems like we're completely, we're, we're incredibly comfortable just making claims about things that we have no intention of ever testing. Um, I would venture to say that the claims that Dr. Mike is making here about most of the top natural fitness influencers having incredible genetics, I would say that borders on being non-falsifiable, which is a major no-no in science. Let me explain what that means. This is a, a, um, an idea by Karl Popper, which states that to be scientific, you have to be making claims that can be either proven true or false, right? You have, you say something, you, your, your skin's in the game, somebody can go out there and test whether it's true or false, okay? If, if I said, for example, it's sunny outside, okay? You can look out the window and tell me you're full of shit, it's raining, because it is. And I would be falsified, right? What I said, well, what I said would have been falsified, right? Um, so if I, if I make a, a claim about the world like that, you go out and test it and tell if it's true or false, right? Um, let me give you an example of something that's non-falsifiable and therefore unscientific, you can't say that. Um, there's an invisible unicorn in the room with me. Well, I can't see it, yeah, because it's invisible. Okay, well, put your hand through it. Well, it's, it's an intangible unicorn. Its molecules are set up in such a way that physical objects pass right through it, but it's there. Okay, well, can you smell it? It doesn't have smell. Right, it's not falsifiable. Nothing that I can do can d prove or disprove it, right? It's not true or false. It's just you can't test it in any way. Um, I would argue that claims about genetics more or less uh, boil down to being unfalsifiable in actual practice, not in theory. In, in, in theory, we have genes. You can test the genes, right? And, you know, in theory, with uh, sufficiently advanced technology and the willingness to use it, you can totally test somebody's muscle building genes. Um, now, in practice, I don't think our technology is quite there. It's kind of there, so you could sort of test it, not completely. But where it becomes not falsifiable is that no one, no one does it, no one even thinks about doing it. And people are out here making these claims, not with absolutely zero thought that anyone could actually test uh, the claims that they're making, you know? Um, like, you know, Dr. Mike can say what he says, and he is completely confident that no, that no natural fitness influencer is going to come back and show him a DNA test that, you're wrong, Dr. Mike, I got my test, I got my DNA tested, I have terrible genetics, you're wrong, I need a retraction. And I mean, the way Dr. Mike said it specifically actually does make it fully non-falsifiable because he can always, with anyone who does that, to the extent that it's even possible, which I don't know that it actually fully is, he can just say, oh, well, I wasn't talking about that guy in particular. I was talking about all the others. And I said, I said almost all, I wasn't talking about that guy. So, I mean, in actual practice, Dr. Mike made a non-falsifiable claim. Like, how, how are you going to come back and disprove what he said? And he's, you know, he's saying this to try to educate his viewers. He's trying to, he's trying to change what his viewers think. He's trying to, you know, shape the conversation, you know, shape how we, how we look at natural versus enhanced. And he's making a completely non-falsifiable claim, which is like one of the biggest no-nos, one of the biggest violations of scientific principles. You can't do that. That's where you start getting into, I mean, a lot of kind of religious stuff, like, I mean, creationism. I, I, I don't want to offend, you know, I, I don't want to offend people based on the religion, but a lot of that comes into like, how, how is science different from various religions? And I think, yeah, I think, you know, mo as far as I know, most world religions are totally compatible with the scientific worldview and all that. But, you know, when, when you had certain people that believed that their, that their doctrines about how things were uh, came into, con uh, into conflict with the scientific method, they would just keep adding extra criteria like the invisible unicorn. Like, you know, scientists would, would test something and say, hey, no, it doesn't work that way. Oh, well, this, you know, it's explained by the, right? They, they would always have some other explanation to tack on for why you couldn't test the thing you were testing, right? And that, that is exactly what we're doing with statements like, yeah, most of the top fitness influencers have amazing genetics, okay? You can't disprove it in any way, so he's perfectly safe in saying that. So we got to get away from that kind of stuff. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to come down too hard on Dr. Mike as an individual because he's not alone in this. I mean, everyone, everybody does this stuff. So don't, don't, don't take this as like, 
you know, Atlas hates Dr. Mike and is saying he's the bad guy who's doing this because everyone's doing it. This is just an example that I saw that's just particularly egregious, but it's not coming out of nowhere. So don't go, don't go sending a bunch of hate comments to him or something. He's, I mean, he's just doing what everybody else does. It, I'm not singling him. I, I am singling him out just because it's a good example, but that doesn't mean that um, it's something that only is specific to him, right? Um, but yeah, that's, we, we need to do better. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of doing fitness as a science-based thing in general. Um, there's going to be something else out on that very soon that'll explain my perspective on that in a lot greater detail. I think you guys are really going to like it, but I don't want to spoil it here. But at least if we're going to be doing science-based, can we, can we stick to the, the actual principles? Can we not just egregiously violate the principles of science in our science-based videos, please. Okay, so let's get back out of the esoteric scientific theory and get back into the meat and potatoes of why this matters, okay? It's simple. Telling your viewers who are implied to have average genetics that the gulf between what they can achieve and what natural influencers can achieve is functionally equivalent to the gulf between regular people and enhanced lifters, that's blackpilling. It's incredibly blackpilling, okay? You're telling them, essentially, they're never going to achieve all that much. Okay, and you're, you're not saying it in so many words, but that's essentially what you're telling them. And there are a ton of people that are already blackpilled about a ton of things, whether it be genetics, you know, declining testosterone levels, what have you. You know, people are already blackpilled about what their results are going to be, okay? And, and telling them, oh, well, it's a, don't compare yourself to a natural influencer because, you know, your, your genetics will never allow you to achieve what they can achieve. But that's okay because you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anyone. Comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself to anyone. It's okay, you know, like just compare yourself to yourself and be, you know, a better, better version of yourself each day. Okay, that, that is essentially the bodybuilding equivalent of a girl saying, you know, hey, you're not like those bigger guys. That hurts. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. I, that. That's uncomfortable, believe it or not. I, that's definitely not what I want. Okay, that's a terrible thing to hear. It's blackpilling. And here's the thing. If it was the cold, hard reality, if, if it was just the cold, hard truth and you were just smacking people with the cold, hard truth and, you know, it's there whether you like to, whether you like it or not, you just have to accept it. Okay, you know, there's a place in life for brutal, uncomfortable truths. 100%, okay? But this is not it. This is not it because we have no evidence for any of this. This is unfalsifiable. It's made up. It's speculation. Again, I don't think we even have... We don't, I don't think we even have the science there. I don't think we have enough understanding of exactly how genetics work as far as muscle building to really say with any kind of confidence that the gulf um, between, you know, people who have quote unquote, you know, elite muscle building genetics and average folks is really that big. You know, maybe like what is the standard deviation in terms of, of muscle building? Do we, do we even know that? Like what, what is the standard deviation um, in terms of like, muscularity. We, I, don't, I don't know that we even really have the distribution in terms of genetics. Maybe we do. And that's all falsifiable. If I'm wrong about that, you can totally tell me and I'll be proven wrong, right? I'm not, I'm not making something up, but to the best of my knowledge, I don't think we know, I don't think we know, you know, that much about what genetics um, do in terms of potential for muscle building. So it could very well be that it's it's kind of a tight grouping, you know, the people at the very top are not that far away from the people at the very bottom. It could be huge, it could be small. I don't think we fully know that, you know, so somebody with elite muscle building genetics could in practice not actually be all that far away from somebody with average genetics. I don't think the science is there. And again, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but even if, even if the science is there, we're not doing it. Your viewers are not getting DNA tests. Those influencers are not getting DNA tests. It's all speculation, and no one knows anything about that. You know, no one, no one actually knows what they're talking about. So, you can't, you can't do hard, you know, ice water in the face, cold hard reality when you don't know what reality is. So why are we, why are we just making stuff up, just bullshitting, just pulling stuff out of our ass, just making stuff up without testing it to blackmail people? It, it. It doesn't make sense as far as trying to do good things for those people. It's, you know, you're just, you're just basically telling them, Hey, you'll never, you'll never achieve anything important. I, I know, I know that's not, that's not the goal. The goal is, Oh, you shouldn't compare yourself to, okay, whatever. We're going to compare ourselves to other people. That's how we do, you know? So at least, 
you know, if we don't know, if we if we don't have you know accurate science on a subject, let's you know let's not let's not go acting like we do and just bring ourselves down you know without anything to go off of. It's crazy, you know. And by the way, I, I, I'm not going to talk too much about the whole, like, what should natural lifters do as far as looking who they look to for inspiration. Um, I think other content creators probably be better suited to addressing the whole, the whole video. I'm just kind of sticking to the unscientific claims about genetics. I think that's, that's what I want to keep this to. But I'm going to really quick give a little anecdote about following natural influencers and getting inspiration from them. Okay, so um, one example, I don't know if this is who... Uh, Dr. Mike is thinking of when he says amazing genetics, but um, one example is that I can think of is Joffrey Schofield, and he obviously has gigantic arms, okay, and he's natural, so I look at him and say, Jesus, those arms are huge, maybe I can get my arms like that, and you know what, I've been putting a lot of work into my triceps, and I've been trying to figure out some better training methods, and just putting a lot of focus in it, and lo and behold, my triceps are growing. Now they're not as big as his are, but you know, looking at someone who's further down that path and comparing my physique to his, you know, it allowed me to say, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe there's more potential for growth here. I compared and found that I was lacking, and that doesn't necessarily just mean that I have bad genetics. It could mean that I have not trained in the most advantageous manner yet, and there's more gains left to be unlocked. And you know, I think I've closed the gap. Well, no, because then he went on another turbo bulk, so now he's probably. You know, that much bigger right so whatever okay you can't win with that but but bottom line i got better for comparing myself to natural lifters who you know are you know highly developed whether that's from genetics training we really have no idea although you look at the way he trains it's obviously at least in a large part training anyway just wanted to share that quick little anecdote and then close by saying, look, this is not an attack on Dr. Mike. I think he probably made this with good intentions because obviously he's trying to tell people how not to, um, I guess, feel bad about themselves. He, in my opinion, this is incredibly misguided. And I'm also not attacking him for talking about genetics because everybody does it. So, you know, when you hear me saying Dr. Mike, I'm not just saying he's the only guy who does this. The whole fitness industry does this and everybody needs to stop. But... What he said, I think, was particularly egregious and just a really good example, a really good time to point this out and get rid of this, okay? So before I finish up, if there's any confusion, please let me know. I don't want this to be misunderstood. A lot of people get up in arms when I talk about genetics. I am not saying that genetics don't play a role. Uh, obviously, we know from biology that genetics are incredibly important. DNA is incredibly important. It's not that. It's that we are not, we just are not testing it. We are not actually directly assessing it. And I really don't think the science is there to know exactly how it's affecting our muscle building, right? So if there's any lack of clarity, please let me know so I can address it in the comments. Thank you for watching once again. I'm not trying to attack. I'm just trying to attack an idea, not a person, right? So don't take this personally. It, this is an idea that needs to die, not a person that I dislike, right? Does that make sense? All right, thank you for watching.